All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, you guys. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about pricing and quotes. So obviously, this is for our businesses out there. Um, let's just jump into it. So right away, you'll see these three options here. Manual quoting means that your customer will not see any prices. They can upload parts and select what they want, choose all the various uh, materials and properties that they'd like, and then they submit it to you to review. That bounces to you. You then have a human put in the prices and you send it back. Okay, cool. Automatic quoting is the exact opposite. Everything has a price, everything, everything, everything. This is probably, I don't know anyone who actually uses this because uh, that just means that everything gets a price. So most of you are gonna go with this, selectively automatic quoting. This is where you can choose which materials get instantly priced and when. So what do I mean by the whole and when thing? Basically here, it will allow you to instantly quote materials based on the machines that you feel comfortable running them in. So a Goliath bot, that's a made up machine. Let's pretend that it's 500 by 500 by 500 millimeters or actually in this fake account, you've probably seen in other videos that we have it in there and that's how big that machine is. So as far as the software is concerned, anything that is 500 by 500 by 500 millimeters or smaller will be instantly quoted with PLA, okay? Now, real talk, this Goliath bot, it's not enclosed. Okay, so it's really good with PLA. We'll see about PETG, but there's no way, there's no way you would print ASA with it. Let me hit save down here, get that out of my face. Great. Uh, there's no way you would print ASA with it. So boom, bamboo. Okay, yeah, if it fits on a bamboo, you can get an instant price in ASA. But if it's bigger than what it'll fit on a bamboo, it requires a manual quote. Doesn't mean we can't do it, just means that I gotta check it out before you instantly buy some massive ASA part. Okay, cool. Moving along, uh, huh? Great. Enforce a minimum order price. So this is gonna be for the total of your job. Moving along, provide clients an expedition option. When you do this, I always tell people, make sure the language here is clear. Um, $80 might make a small order be ready in the next day, but if someone places a $20,000 order, the $80 isn't doing much, right? It's like, okay, we're moving a little faster. Cool. Um, but yeah, so make sure you're clear in your language that this doesn't always mean next day. Um, you know, many times next day is impossible. Huge part, you know, sorry, build time's more than a day. Um, okay, moving on. Let's hit save. Great. So now we're about to jump into the meat and potatoes, at which point I need to introduce my favorite little friend down here, the show price previews button. Here, what it'll do is it'll show you exactly how all of the things that you're doing over here will affect parts as they go up in quantity. Okay, so one of it, five of it, 10, 50, 100, breaks down your setup price, your cleaning price, your material price, your print time, shows how each one of those are a factor at your various bulk quantities, and ultimately gives you a price per part at one, a price per part at five, up to 100, these can even be adjusted if you'd like. Pretty cool, can't wait to show it to you. But first, where did these come from? They come from just any project that you wanna make and you assign which project that is right here. So I have already made a project. We're navigating there right now. As you can see, I didn't fill in any client email or information because the only purpose of this project is to show me pricing. So cool, right now I have everything as a black PLA part. If I wanted to test something else, I would change it here and it would instantly change back here. Great. So this is talking to that project at all times. If you change that project, it'll change here, vice versa, that'll all happen in real time. Cool. So uh, setup cost, let's just go ahead and change something. So FDM, we know that that's what's being shown on the right. So you literally see exactly how it affects everything. So at quantity one, the price per part went up by $21, but at quantity 100, the setup price is basically meaningless or means a lot less. Back to normal. 
material cost. This is where you can just input the exact price that you pay in material. Um, this extra little multiplier over here on the right uh, is just to help when you need it. Um, this is advanced, so let me just say this is what you do to sort of bump numbers up and down as needed. Um, to get into the why and the how of it would require moderate calculus, but that's just what these do. So, okay, printing difficulty. Uh, it's a little bit harder than I used to think. So let me just, I don't want to change anything else, but let me just, can we, can we please charge a little bit more when you need this? And it'll show, okay, so your material cost uh, went down, uh, your print time went down, sorry, your material cost went up, and your print cost went up because you said that it was a little bit more difficult than you thought. Let's go back. Cool. So just kind of keep that in mind anytime you see this right column, um, which happens in every menu. I'm going to keep kind of telling you that's just that sort of move it around button um, because you can only be so automated uh, and you can only have everything be perfect sometimes. So cool. Here you put in all of your material costs for the various technologies that you're using. I clearly have not set up SLS here. So, okay, let's move on now to the print time cost. And this will vary substantially based on what technology you're using. Um, because print time with a big powder machine is completely different than with, you know, potentially what we're used to over here with FDM machines. Um, in some cases you just, I haven't set up SLS, but yeah, you just, you might think, oh, MJF should be so much more expensive per hour than FDM because the machine is so much more expensive, but it's like, well, no, the machine's like, is running 500 parts tonight, you know? So anyway, uh, as always, you should take these numbers with a grain of salt because print time, there's no way we know. Um, some of you are printing really fast. Some of you are printing really slow. Uh, there's a massive, massive difference there. So we don't know who you are, um, and these buttons will sort of help you mess around with that. As always, let this be your guide, okay? Don't necessarily focus on the conservative number that you might see here, 1.7 hours, because that might not be correct. Do focus on what do I want to charge for this part in print time? What would I charge if there were five of them in print time. Okay, you want a hundred of them? Now the print time, you know, it's, it's much less that I want to charge now. Um, focus on all of these. Don't worry so much about what these numbers are, but play with these numbers to get these numbers to look correct. And that's just a broad way of me telling you, like once again, the behind the scenes calculus and the algorithm all makes sense um, it's just very, very hard to break it down for any specific individual. So as you adjust these numbers, you will come to something that you're happy with over here, even if these numbers might seem weird over here. Awesome. So that's the best way I can describe that one. That one's a really tough one because, again, print time is just so different and, and we don't know what your speed is. Um, okay, moving on. Cleaning cost. So, um, yep. This is a labor related thing. So you generally just decide how much you want to charge in that regard. And then you can adjust your difficulties. This is again, that sort of magic button uh, based on the various materials um, and technologies. So in this case, we didn't change anything. And in this case, um, I guess we decided that PETG was more difficult to clean. So let's just go for it. Cool. So your cleaning time went up. And you'll notice the logic with cleaning time. You get a little faster, but I mean, for the most part, if it's a difficult part to clean, in this case, this one isn't, because there's very few supports. The software is looking into things like that. So if you're wondering how the software guessed at that number, Again, that's, that's the calculus going on in the background. That's, there's a brain behind all of this. It just might, might need you to nudge it up or down. Um, so it looked for things like supports and said, no, there weren't any. Um, okay, so once again, it doesn't matter how many there are. 
humans can only move so fast. Um, so the logic with cleaning time as it relates to this software is that that isn't something that scales necessarily, uh, at least with FDM, with something like MJF, and I'm just getting way too in the weeds, cleaning time might be meaningless because you mostly just depowder a whole batch of parts at the same time and you're going to be doing that every day no matter what you just you can't make parts without doing it any other way and then once you're done you know pulling it out of the powder it's done and that's just sort of the way it is cool all right let's keep it moving uh adjusting the cleaner estimator algorithm there's a reason that says advanced so should you really want to just dive in there uh, you'll read through our documentation, otherwise wouldn't recommend it. Um, yeah, just talk to me and I can help you out there. My name's Michael, nice to meet you. Lead time estimation. Okay, you're gonna have three different types of ways to calculate lead time. And I am going to wait to show you those because I'm going to save it for last. So we'll talk about lead time later. We're not quite done with pricing. There are pricing things. You think this menu is done, and it is. This is the pricing menu. But back to your materials and capabilities. Uh, let's say that you've got something like a property like custom paint or supreme clear, um, you know, strip and ship, bead best, bead blast. Uh, these can affect your pricing as well. So uh, within each one of these, and you can of course always create your own, these are just, this is just a demo account. I know I say that all the time. Uh, you can say, um, I don't know, if it's dyed black, then that is an extra blank per part or however to the price. And there's various like ways that you can get more advanced with that. Or you can say, hey, it's dyed black, no, no way. Like, we are not showing them a price if they want it dyed black. Uh, so that's where you would do custom paint, right? So if someone chooses da 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 Okay, someone chooses custom paint, yeah. I mean, you're gonna have to tell me a little bit more before you get a price. Um, yes, and I believe this add, ah uh, yes, add or multiply to price. Okay, and that's per part. I should, we should change the wording here a little bit. So you could add like a dollar for every part that needs in this case, custom paint, um, or you could multiply everything by a percentage, right? Um, and we're gonna get even more advanced with things that can look into uh, surface area and other kind of like things like that to just really, really, really get advanced with that. But uh, we are finding as is that it is already, um, already the options can be customized more than anyone else out there that we're aware of. Uh, Okay, cool. So that now concludes the pricing. Thank you so much. Let's get into lead time. Okay, what did I say, three ways? I hope I'm correct. Yes, okay, so here's your strategies for lead time. There is, oh, sorry, I should stop leaning back. There is capacity-based, price-based, which is what I think you should do, and then there's volume-based. Uh, the reason I paused here and said I think you should do this is because this is going to assume that everything in your enterprise is perfect at all times. If you get a new machine, the software needs to know about it. If a machine goes down, the software needs to know about it. The software is looking at your capacity and it's giving them a lead time. And if your software is not correct, these numbers could get crazy. You should really, in my opinion, only choose capacity-based I would say almost never if you're a store. This is what like all the other people who use the software who are trying to manage their print queues and things like that, uh, this is where they do that um, because they have to keep everything you know, perfect at all times. Uh, you running a business, uh, no. Like if someone shows up and they wanna spend money, you don't wanna tell them it's gonna take two weeks just because you're busy. You wanna be able to figure something out, right? Not everything's perfect, it takes a human sometimes. So I recommend going price-based. Um, finally, there's volume-based, which is, you know, more or less the same and, and also highly, highly, highly open to issues coming from things not being perfect, particularly when you consider infill and just all sorts of other stuff like that. Uh, so this is more for like your powder companies. And again, not usually for companies that are selling stuff. Okay, so basically, if you're selling stuff, I recommend a range. So you just say, hey, uh, okay, if you're if you're making something, if you're buying something that's 
under $100, I can either give you a fixed range where I literally say that that is this amount of days, and then I would uh, add another one and another one. Okay, so if it's like if you're within a zero and a hundred dollars, you're gonna get one value. If you're within, uh huh, you're gonna need to say, oh, yep, good. Huh, it auto fills that for me. That is so nice. Okay, if I'm gonna be, yeah, and you just kind of go up here, and so you you basically say, okay, if you're if you're within this price range, then odds are I can get stuff done in this many days minimum, this many days maximum. So I have found, I've been at this for a long time. I don't wanna act like I know what I'm doing, but I have been actively selling 3D printed parts for significantly longer than a decade. I am old. And uh, I have found you generally wanna tell someone three to five days or two to four days. You don't wanna say three days. Um, you don't want to say five days. You want to kind of give them a range. And of course, you always want to shoot for this. And you don't want to just sit around and wait for that. Okay, cool. And yeah, so then you can give them a little tool tip. This is what they see. And uh, that is the lead time that they'll get. So if it's less than $100, they'll get a three to five lead time. Blah, 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 excuse me, day lead time. If it's between 100 and 200, they will get a zero to zero. No, that's where you'd say, I don't know, like five to six days. Um, I mean, this is, this is bad, you know, I mean, it'd be like something like, something like this. Okay. <sighs> and then if you make it a linear function, just uh, play around with it, do the math, and get back to us. Okay, cool. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Great. And then you can do the same for all your various technologies, and that concludes the video. I know it was a long one. Thanks for pushing through with me, you guys. Let us know, as always, if you have any questions, and I will see you guys next time.